guys welcome back to another m creator tutorial so you guys voted for the boundary box for the blocks and stuff like that now the entity ones are a little bit different i might do a separate tutorial on that but um i wanted to explain how the blocks work because a lot of people are asking on how they work and if i could do a tutorial on them so i thought i would basically go ahead and create something and i'll show you the method that i use to basically get the coordinates for these now as you can see um it's a little hard with this particular thing but when we select the item or the, the block there is a ledge that goes along here that basically uh, indicates that we're hovering over it. If we go off it, then you can see that line goes away. So basically that means that that is the part where the block is um, interacting with. So if we were to go in this space behind here, we can actually destroy that block without um, interfering with the block in front. So that's basically what boundary bo bounding boxes do, is it allows you to specify where right click or the, the the block breaking and stuff actually happens uh, now generally what you want to do is basically follow the actual model of your block a lot of blocks in vanilla minecraft are very similar to how this is set up if you just plop down a lever uh, you can see that the outline here is where the lever is however you could probably get away with if you were to actually model it to have something like that but because how levers work it it's on an angle it was probably the best not for minecraft to actually add it because it's on a grid based system not a angle based system so it makes sense why they have it that way if we put down say a redstone torch however you can see that this the boundary box on this is four blocks wide now this is mainly because um it's easier to break something a little bit larger than actually like a small torch like that. If it was two by two, like the width of the actual torch there, it would also be really hard to break. Uh, if we open up just a regular torch, it should be the same four by four. So as you can see, that's basically what it is. And they're still pretty hard to break. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's take a look at this and I'll just break this for example underneath and you can see that works and if you break the block there then you can see that it actually breaks it so we have to actually be selecting the the model itself so if I were looking over here underneath the block I would be attacking the block there but if we were to break this one then you can see that it breaks that Again, if we were to want to break that, then we can break any side that it connects with. Another thing that you might notice is um, the position where it actually you collide with it is going to be a little bit different as well. So uh, the boundary bounding box basically has different coordinates of basically where you collide with it is going to be where the the actual position of those particular um, particular uh, coordinates are so we can't really walk anywhere outside of the shape that it's already at so for example if we were to walk into it here we can actually go but we can't jump because it's too um, too uh, low to actually do any real jumping really so that's basically down to the shape so it does affect the physical properties with interaction with the player and uh, it can also be easier or difficult more difficult depending on how you set it up uh, to actually break the block but it can also allow for more dynamic uh, breaking as well for example this if we had a, just a huge cube here we wouldn't be able to break that block behind so yeah that's basically that now let's go into um, block bench and I'm going to show you how to get the coordinates and uh, then I'm going to show you how to basically put the coordinates into the actual block Alright, so I am in the current model and I have the same model that I have with the uh, boundary box that we just covered. Uh, there is a few things that I need to note. Uh, blocks also have pivot points for meshes. So you might want to set up your pivot point in a system where all of them are at the bottom um, northwest corner. 
And the reason for this is it's going to make your getting your coordinates for the actual bound, bounding box a lot easier when you're using the pivot point because you can actually figure out where the exact uh, pivot or the exact coordinates for the starting and ending position for the actual meshes are. So in our case, uh, I have categorized everything in alphabetical order. So there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and there is your starting coordinates and then your um, ending coordinates. So, so that's basically what consists of the actual mesh. How I got that was basically through the pivot point. As you can see here, uh, the pivot point is located right at that bottom northwest corner. That's right there. And what we have is our pivot point selection right here. So we can actually offset this if we want to a different direction if we really need to. And then we can kind of get different coordinates based on the location of it. So what I've done is I've basically taken that pivot point from over here and I've brought it up to the mesh and made it so it's right on the corner bottom northwest corner of the actual mess mesh so the north is facing this way west is on that side east is this way and then south is behind the model um, now that's basically the coordinates that we have in the document as you can see it's uh, x2 y8 and z14 so that's the same position as your pivot point here which is 2 8 and 14. Now to get the other one, what you want to do is basically go along the other side of the opposite corner of the actual mesh itself. So for example, our opposite corner is right there. So what we want to do is we want to go over one pixel this way because that's how uh, wide the actual mesh is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, um, I believe, increase it by one. And then what we want to do is take the Z and increase by, by two. And then what we want to do is basically go up until we meet the corner there, which is our next position. So if we go into here, as you can see, our X position is three. That is where the pivot point is. Our Y position is 15, which is our Y position here. And then our Z position is 16. So this is basically where that one is right there. So that's actually, that should be 15, shouldn't it? That should be 15. Why, why do I have, I have a typo. All right, there we go, 15. Uh, so that's basically where the other coordinate is, is on level 15. So you can do that for every model or mesh that you basically put in and what this will do is you'll basically create a table like this that you can actually bring into mCreator and set up your meshes. Just make sure to write down something that you remember for your beginning and your start or your ending position. Now you want the for the the starting position which is going to be your lowest point is going to be Z uh, pardon me, uh, your negative coordinates. So negative Z, negative Y, and negative Z, uh, X. So those are your three things. And that just happens to be on the uh, bottom northwest corner. So again, that would be over on this corner here. And if we were to bring that all the way back um, to the number that we want. Whoop. That's the wrong one. So I believe it's down one. So we want it over on that corner right there. Uh, I moved that, so I'll have to fix that up. But uh, basically this corner, and then you want the opposite corner, which is on this side right here. Um, after that, uh, when you have all your data for your coordinates, for your meshes, what you need to do is you need to go into mCreator and then your block. And then if you go to boundary boxes, and then what you need to do is create a bound bounding box for each one of those coordinates. So again, this is all the coordinates that we have set up here. So this is our minimum coordinates. As you can see, it says minimum X, minimum Y and minimum Z. And then you have your maximum coordinates, which are the top um, 
east south coordinates so your maximum x maximum y and maximum z coordinates are here this should actually no that's 15 that should be 15 i think too so again uh, that was a typo on my end but it basically had the same thing that we had in the uh tutorial but yeah, basically all, t all you need to do to create a new one is just add another one like that. You can also remove them if you don't want them in that particular order anymore. But uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. Once you type out all the coordinates from that you've written down like this, then they should be in working order. Again, this is in the order that I have the coordinates in. So uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So those are all the different meshes. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense on how you can actually use the bounding boxes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And uh, I, I hopefully uh, described how to test it in pretty good <laughs> quality. If not, then I'll try to do a follow-up video or something uh, explaining a little bit more. But outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.